to today's first afternoon session. This is the fourth block of our dictionary and lexical database session. And our first presenter is Spela Arhar Holt, who will give a talk uh, on a thesaurus of modern Slovene. Now, now it, this is working. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining this session. I will be talking about the Thesaurus of Modern Slovene, which is now slowly, eventually, will be published uh, in its second edition. I will begin by um, giving a short demo of the dictionary because it will be much more interesting and easier to follow the rest of my talk after that, after you see how it looks like, how it functions. Then I will present the features of the responsive dictionary model. I will present the novelties we have in Thesaurus 2.0. And after that, I will focus a little bit more on two activities that were maybe the most lexicographic in their nature. The preparation of sense divided entries and the labeling of negative vocabulary in the dictionary. Then I will conclude with some plans for future work, which in our case is, of course, Thesaurus 3.0. Um, I prepared a short demo. I will be commenting this as we go. You will see that the interface is translated into English, so it should be easy enough for you to figure out the different parts of the dictionary. The data is, of course, in Slovene, so if you have questions about that, save them for the discussion. I will gladly um, answer that. So, um, let's see. Yes, this is working. We will look at these two example entries. The first entry um, exemplifies an automatically generated entry. It's an adverb, pochasi, which means slowly. Here you can see we have a couple of antonyms and we have a lot of synonyms. Uh, we can arrange this data according to different criteria. We can also um, filter according to corpus frequency. And uh, this is important. Um, the users can vote on the synonym candidates. They can assign upvotes or downvotes for each candidate in the dictionary. Here you can see that users can also contribute their own suggestions of synonyms. There are quite some suggestions from version 1.0 already. And here as well, the community can vote, upvote or downvote for user suggestions. The same mechanics are available for antonyms as well. Now we will look at the other example, which is structured a little bit differently. It is a sense divided entry. So you can hear, see here on the top, we have so-called uh, semantic indicators, which in a short way explain what these, uh, in this case, three word senses are about. And the data is then, of course, arranged accordingly to these different word senses. And here I will show how users can very easily suggest their own um, synonyms. They can also click and they can select a dictionary label or write in their own label. Here I will write pogovorno, which means colloquial for this suggestion. And at the end, they can also assign the suggestion to a specific word sense. Immediately after uh, submission, we get a thank you and the suggestion appears without any editing in the interface and the users can already start voting and giving feedback on the suggestion. The last thing I will show is the comparative collocate view. Here we can compare uh, collocations or collocates for two different synonyms. We can see, for example, the words that appear with both hiteti and brzeti. And if we click on the collocate, we also get a selection, a goodest, goodest uh, selection of examples from the reference corpus of written modern Slovene. So this is just to give you an impression on how uh, Thesaurus 2.0 looks like. This is a responsive dictionary. Uh, we call it responsive because it responds to language change and the feedback we get from the language community. There are some defining features. 
for a dictionary to be called responsive. The first one is that it is developed uh, specifically for the digital medium, and it really tries to leverage the opportunities of the digital medium. Secondly, uh, the database is constructed entirely automatically from pre-existing open language resources, and then it is released uh, to the community as soon as it is linguistically evaluated as relevant. Then thirdly, this dictionary is then gradually improved through editing, manual editing, of course, which in involves both lexicographic work and user participation. As the data evolves, the changes, of course, have to be transparently tracked and archived. And very importantly, the final product, the database, needs to be openly accessible because that is the whole point of the responsive dictionary model. We want to create uh, language data that uh, we want to um, facilitate fast access to open language data. So from this perspective, the responsive dictionary model might also be interesting for other languages apart from Slovene. If you're interested specifically in how Thesaurus 1.0 was created automatically, you can read this paper from Crick and others. Um, it's, it describes the methodology in greater detail. Here we can see the differences between the first editions of the dictionary. As I said, uh, Thesaurus 1.0 was entirely automatically created. Now it also includes manually revised and edited data. We included uh, information on part of speech that we didn't have before. We included corpus frequency information and we disambiguated homonym headwords. We included um, sense divisions for 2000 entries and we included labels for negative vocabulary. Initially, we also had, uh, we only had dictionary labels for domains. So terminology was labeled, but nothing else. We also um, provided the users with the option to add dictionary labels to their own suggestions. And we added roughly uh, 2,500 antonyms pair, uh, antonym pairs on top of the synonyms we have in the dictionary. Importantly, uh, we integrated all this data into the digital dictionary database, database for Slovene, which means that now it's linked with other language data we have from other resources, and we can also now use, we use um, synonym data in other language resources. Uh, last but not least, we have two topi topics that were covered yesterday. Um, the first one uh, by Istok Kosam, who was talking about how we improved collocation extraction, also for the collocation dictionary of modern Slovene. We also improved the set of grammatical relations we're using in the comparative collocate view. And the last one was presented by uh, Magdalena Gapsa, uh, who was explaining how we evaluated a large number of user-suggested synonyms, and we will use these results um, for Thesaurus 3.0. I will explain that at the end. Um, all of these novelties um, I was showing are described in the paper, but as promised now, I would like to focus a little bit on um, sense-divided entries, how we prepared those. We selected uh, 2,000 headwords. We considered their part of speech, the number of senses, dictionary labels, and we were also interested in potentially offensive vocabulary. Why? I will explain on the next slide. We then equipped these headwords with semantic indicators. Uh, we took those from the comprehensive Slovenian-Hungarian dictionary, and for some headwords, we also had to prepare them anew. If you remember from the video, semantic indicators, these short descriptions of um, word senses that help differentiate a specific sense from all the other senses of a head word. So for example, for this verb, hiteti, you would have like to hurry with an activity, to hurry with movement, or to hurry pertaining to the passing of time. We have this chas hiti, time flies. After we had um, the indicators, we then attributed the synonyms to the corresponding senses. And we did that, of course, after checking the usage of words in various corpora and other resources. Here I listed the corpora we were using, 
Uh, we also use the collocation dictionary and uh, sketch diff uh, function uh, in of the sketch engine for the reference corpus and similar. You can check out the paper for this. While checking the usage, we remove the candidates where the usage could not be confirmed. And we had quite a lot of borderline candidates, which we chose to keep. We prioritized inclusion over exclusion, which is in, in line with the responsive model, where we want to show a large amount of data to the users and then um, help decide with their feedback what is actually relevant and what is not relevant for them. Um, I have two more slides about uh, how we labeled negative vocabulary in the dictionary. Um, we, of course, want to have a socially sensitive dictionary that can also be used for pedagogic purposes. And with Thesaurus 1.0, we had a big problem because um, the automatically extracted data appeared without any usage warnings, even for highly problematic cases. Like here, you have two um, very derogatory words, the first one for a gay man and the second one for a dark-skinned man. And these words appeared without any labels or warnings in the dictionary. Uh, the second problem was that the users were also prompted to provide uh, marked vocabulary to marked headwords. And they didn't have in 1.0 a nice um, systematic way uh, through the interface to apply the label. So how did we uh, mark the negative vocabulary? First, we had to identify it. And we did that with the help of students who helped us in the first step to separate the vocabulary, words and phrases that were potentially problematic from those that were entirely non-problematic. So that was quite a big work. And after that, after we had those results, we got uh, 1,810 synonym sets that were potentially problematic. We gave those to the lexicographers and uh, lexicographers then checked the usage of words and assigned the correct and appropriate labels for this vocabulary. Well, there is an entire paper dedicated to this topic. If you're interested, I, um, of course, <laughs> gently invite you to, to check it out. Um, we encountered two types of words while we were labeling, of course, um, first uh, problematic in all senses, like this is a yabati, which literally means to fuck over or fuck up. Um, it's problematic in all senses. And then we have also uh, a number of words that are problematic in one or more senses, but not all of them, like nategnity, maybe to screw would be a good um, example here where you have some neutral senses that you want to leave alone and then you have some that are connected with sexual activities that maybe you want to label. So these ones, the latter, were included among the head words for sense division. So after we had the senses divided, then we assigned the label to the sense. Um, this is how we did it. We were using three distinct labels, um, hateful, coarse, and uh, expresses negative attitude. And this is also really interesting. We had a lot of really interesting debates about how finely we want to grain the labeling of uh, negative vocabulary and how we want to name and how we want to use these labels. And here we were, I think, at least in the Slovene environment, like a lexicographic environment, a little bit innovative because we decided to go with uh, label uh, hateful to uh, connect also to signify that this is uh, vocabulary that is usually appearing in hate speech. So these are uh, rare but very hostile words that are expressing intolerance uh, towards uh, individuals or social groups. For example, we would have nouns like uh, faggot, nigger, kike. They would be considered and labeled hateful in our dictionary. Then we have coarse. Um, these words uh, seem, may seem inappropriate due to social and moral norms. Uh, these are usually connected with some social taboos like uh, sex, uh, excretion, uh, violence, and they're also often uh, marked as colloquial as well. Um, for example, fuck it or shit or to piss, um, piss off, etc. These would be marked as coarse. And then we have the third group, uh, which in, in the intensity of negativity 
is much gentler, but it still expresses a negative attitude. So we have words that are used to ridicule or express disapproval, criticize certain characteristics um, of individuals, objects, or actions. For example, a bimbo, um, a phony, a dive, etc. So this is quite a large group. And while we assigned the labels hateful and coarse across the entire dictionary, we are still working on this um, third group at the moment. What I also want to point out here is that um, in the dictionary, we decided to use icons to warn users that something's going on, some where caution is needed with these words. And clicking on the icon will open this explanation I'm showing here. This is uh, to explain the potential impact the use of the labeled word can have. So if I have a little callback to the first plenary, this would be, um, we are labeling for warning, but not in a prescript, uh, prescriptive manner, but in a descriptive manner. Um, maybe the, the ones that attended that talk will, will recognize what I'm talking about. So we wanted to, to, to show to people what could happen if they use the word, but not tell them explicitly you shouldn't or whatever. Um, as you saw in the video, we also gave the users the option to click to choose um, among these three labels. Now, as I said, uh, we want to continue working on labeling negative vocabulary, this third group. We want to continue working on sense divided entries. We have the guidelines, we have the methodology, we have the pilot data, so this should be easier now to continue. Then secondly, uh, very important, we want to start um, evaluating as editors user suggestions. At the moment, we are very happy to report we have almost 61,000 user suggested synonyms. And this, I think, really shows the success of this approach, at least in our community. Um, right now, the user suggestions appear in the interface, but they don't get automatically included in the dictionary database. So there will be some editorial work there where we have to decide which ones to include and which ones are not relevant. Then we want to continue our work on the automatically extracted antonyms and uh, as well on the selection and visualization of collocates for the comparative collocate view. There's also an ongoing project which uh, Simon Craig is leading. We are creating a new version of the Slovene WordNet. So there will be probably some um, experiments with linking the data between these two databases. And hopefully, at least I'm really hoping that will happen, that we find some time for that as well. A user study, um, how users react and how they evaluate the new features and novelties, because users are, of course, an integral part of our model, and we want to keep reaching out and um, having this communication with them about what they would want. Thank you for your attention. Uh, this is the link to the beta uh, dictionary. You can play around with it. These are our sponsors, our finances, and uh, here you can find my email for any questions that will not be answered <laughs> right now. Thank you, Spella, for this very informative presentation. And I'm sure there are questions, comments, and suggestions. Yes, <laughs> you want to see the sponsors again. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, thank you for the presentation. I was, I was really impressed by the number of user suggestions. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to ask you if you encounter a situation in which user suggested something like ironically or uh, whether they just, you know, uh, make bad suggestions. So, uh, yeah, w w what is your impression of, of these suggestions? What are they? Yeah, we did some preliminary analysis and we were positively surprised by the constructiveness of these suggestions. Over 90%, I would now say probably up to 95% of these um, suggestions are in goodwill. Then we have, of course, a, a smaller amount of 
I would say suggestions that were made in, in bad will, like we have some problems there where people with derogatory head words, then they name they, they write the names of their schoolmates or something, you know, it's it's always going to be there. But that is so little data right now comparatively. And then we have also some cases where, where users were not suggesting synonyms, but maybe were writing um, collocates. You know, they, they made mistakes like green and then they would say frog in, in that. But that is also like a, a very small part of data. What we think is that after we disseminate the dictionary a little bit more to the um, educational side and teachers will start using it regularly in schools, maybe this you know, like you said, these jokes will increase. Um, but at the moment we have uh, professionals contributing, uh, you know, actual users like translators, uh, teachers, proofreaders, and these are incredibly, um, not just constructive, but also very qualified to give good suggestions. And it, it really works, this part. Good for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we, we know, we realize. Hi, Spella. Yeah, I love this project. It's wonderful. Um, I'm wondering, you said that when someone suggests a, a, a synonym, it stays on the interface, mm -hmm. but it doesn't go to the lexical database before being seen by a lexicographer, right? Mm -hmm. So that means that other users might look at that synonym and think that it is a good one and use it. Have, do you know mm -hmm. anything about uh, what people do when they see suggested synonyms mm. the the idea is that they would see a synonym recognize it as bad and mm. downvote it mm -hmm. that is how the, the entire model is created so that the, they should respond to it they they are prompted to respond to user suggestions as well however if i'm completely honest the voting doesn't attract them as much as adding synonyms does so there are many cases where we don't get any upvotes or downvotes. Um, we, we, we try to include that on the first page, you know, to, to make it more obvious and to invite people in the voting part. But I think they, they would vote if something is really, really terribly wrong and they're less uh, inclined to confirm stuff that is okay. Yeah. We have time for one more question. Just a quick one. Um, mm -hmm. Do users have to register with you to add suggestions or have you have you considered what difference that might make? Yeah, we did. And uh, thank you. This is a very good question. We had quite a long talk about it. There are obviously pluses and minuses to both solutions, right? If they registered, we would ask them for a little metadata. We would understand the community better. We would have like a bigger argument for inclusion, blah, blah, blah. But this completely open on the fly, uh, is so much faster and it's so more inclusive. And we believe right now that this was a good decision that we skip the registration that they can just directly go to write. At least this uh, after these, uh, I would say 2018, yeah, the first five years of active usage, this was a good. Um, we did some user studies on what people, like the dictionary users feel about this uh, direct inclusion. And there was a little reservation there. Like it was, the, the question we got was like, but if, if you don't know who's contributing, how do you know if it's good? Mm -hmm. So we had to separate, you know, the, the value of the contribution from the contributor. And after that happens, it's, uh, we can just look at the data that we get and, and value it as, as at face value and it's okay. Mm. If they wanted to, no, not yet. I mean, this is also something we were considering that maybe for some professional um, contributors, it would also give them uh, more motivation if they could see how much they, I mean, contribute to Maybe we could show them some statistics, etc. cetera. Um, but so far we didn't implement that. We might do that for the future. Okay, if there are no more questions, thank you once again. Thank you so much. <laughs>